Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to kind of go ahead and just get started here because this very well could take a long time. This may not. My goal is to keep this definitely under an hour and a half. I'm going to try to keep this closer to like an hour because I don't want to take up too much of everyone's time. We also kind of realized uh, the amount of stuff we want to get through um, might be difficult for us to obviously do a teardown of everyone's site. So we're going to set it up where you'll actually be able to submit and we're just going to do it outside of the this event and then we'll send it to you guys. Um, uh, so we we'll go ahead and dive into this. I'm going to touch on a bunch of stuff. I already see some questions coming in, so we'll get into that. <clears throat> but if you are here, obviously, thank you so much for joining us today. If you joined us last year, you probably know that this is uh, very casual and it's just we have a lot of fun doing it. And if you don't have fun, uh, I apologize. Um, we are going to be brutally honest about your websites from pretty much a first impression standpoint. Uh, we're going to touch on a bunch of stuff, but obviously we're doing our live e-commerce website teardown today. This year, we are lucky enough that both VWO and Buy With Prime have chosen to be a part of it, which is great. We love both of those platforms. We use both of them all the time. So it's going to kind of help us clarify a lot of the stuff we're talking about today. Um, quick little insight into who we are. My name is Andrew Maffetone. I'm the founder here at Blue Tusker. This handsome gentleman who's above me. I think you're above me, right? Yep. Yep. Perf as you should be. Yep. Jason, uh, who is our senior digital designer here and oversees our CRO team. And so he's going to know a lot more than I am, which is always here. Um, so obviously we're going to touch on some, we're going to do the basics real fast. I don't know if you guys do a lot of these when you sit in on them, but like they talk about the basics for like most of the time. I'm not going to do that. We're going to get through the basics. If you don't know what the basics are, Google it. Um, and then we'll talk about uh, the overall effect of CRO, A-B testing strategies, and then we're just going to get straight into the teardown. Um, we're going to try and most of this is going to be just us looking at sites. So a couple of housekeeping things. To your right, which I see a lot of you have probably already found, there is a chat. Feel free to ask us any questions you want throughout this. We really like this to be a conversation. I want to make sure everyone that's here is getting some kind of value out of this as much as possible as well as if you haven't, uh, which I believe is actually my next, yep. If you have not submitted your website already, all you have to do is just drop the URL into the chat and we will try and get to your website. We will not be able to get to everyone's website today. Uh, a lot of you filled out the survey when you initially registered. So we already knew who was ready to do this. So we do have some pre-prepped and then we're going to go through the chat and go through as many as we can if we have time. And then... As I mentioned as well, I'll set up something towards the end where if we don't have time to get to it, you can just shoot us a message and we'll do it just via like a screen share and send it to you after if we don't have time. Um, towards the end, there's the fun stuff. So we'll talk about our CRO audits uh, that we do uh, throughout most of this. Basically, long story short, it's just it covers all your bases. It's like a 300 plus something point uh, audit of every single page on your website. It also maps out all the different tests that we think you should do, at least initially, looks at your overall customer journey, helps you figure out where people are falling off, all that fun stuff. And we're going to give one of those away for free today. And then on top of that, thanks to our good old buddies at Buy With Prime, uh, if you have not implemented Buy With Prime, for all eligible brands, we're going to have an opportunity for you to submit to have a free CRO audit with your implementation of Buy With Prime. Um, and we'll even talk about like we we do it with a lot of different brands. Um, there's pros and cons to it. So I will be very forward about, you know, what we like about it, what we don't like about it, what works, what types of products it works for. So we'll touch on that kind of stuff for you towards the end here as well. The goal is for everyone here to have some kind of audit through their site. Um, whether it's all during today or whether we have to do it sometime after. Um, if you are here, there's some obvious stuff, right? Like, yes, you want to improve your website's overall conversion rate. And we'll talk about how that's kind of like a grandiose goal, but we'll get into that. Increasing your AOV is an area that I find a lot of people don't focus on from a CRO perspective. They're all so focused on improving the conversion rate, which is obvious since it's called CRO. But improving your average order value is another great way to make sure that the people that are converting are converting and paying you even more than they were. So we'll touch on that. 
Um, we'll talk about how you're converting people via like an organic or a paid search side. There's a lot of stuff from a CRO perspective on your blog that a lot of people sleep on. And so we're going to talk about that too. Um, we're going to go through pretty much every step and process that we do for seven, eight figure sellers that are implementing these different CRO strategies. Um, and we're just going to, we're going to show you exactly how it's done. And so before we get into that, I do want to get like a little bit of an idea of where everyone's at and how often they've been doing this, et cetera. So we're going to start off real quick with a quick poll. Uh, I just want to a little curious around the last time that you performed a CRO test on your website. So when I say a CRO test, that could be sim something as simple as like you actually have some platform and you're doing A-B testing with it and you're you know kind of running true uh, tests, or it could be something as like, you you know published the one step checkout for a while and compared it to three step like anything around those sides. Um, just want to get a general idea of you know how many people have done it recently. If you're looking at your page right now, there is a poll up for you to take, um, but I'm not going to leave it up very long because these get boring. Um, so right now it looks like either we've got people that are running tests recently, or you've never run a test before in your life, um, which. Hopefully after today, we're going to change. So we'll talk about that. We'll get through some of this. And it looks it looks like a split audience. It is 50-50. Oh, nope. Nope. We're up to 60s. All right. So we're in this. <laughs> okay. So most of you have never run a CRO test before. Super fine. Totally fun. We're going to figure this out. So I'm going to end that poll. Um, we have another one that was over a year ago. Your poll time's up. <laughs> Thank you. So we're at a... Uh, yeah, sixty-three percent never run a CRO test before. Nine percent did it in the la over a year ago, and twenty-seven percent are in the last month. So a bit of a split audience. So the basic stuff. Like I said, I'm gonna fly through these. I'm not a huge fan of these decks, so we're just gonna get through them. Um, so what is a conversion rate optimization standard stuff? Basically, like think of it like your brick and mortar store. Everyone focuses, oh, it's online. And then you just create this website and now it just needs to convert. If you had a brick and mortar store, you would be testing where you're placing things, how you've got certain stuff showcasing on one area versus another. What's the customer seeing when they walk in? Is your checkout in the back of the store or the front of the store? Are you cleaning your store? Like mm -hmm. basic stuff. <laughs> and so a lot of this, that's exactly what this is. It's consistently maintaining, updating, and improving on your store. I mean, your website is most of the time, one of the first impressions that someone has of your brand. So it's extremely important to be focusing on this. I get really, uh, I, I'm going to say excited, excited about CRO, which sounds cliche. But the thing that I always find interesting is how little people actually focus on CRO and how that just doesn't seem to make any sense to me. If you're spending significant amount of dollars on your marketing spend to driving traffic to your website, but you're not really doing anything to improve how that traffic is responding once they get to your website, it's really just a big waste of marketing dollars. You know, you really have to be focused on how do I get the user to enjoy the experience, get them to do what I need them to do, and then obviously, hopefully, upsell and then retain them. And so, from a CRO perspective, you know, it kind of involves like, you know, analyzing overall user behavior, looking at all your micro conversions and figuring out, you know, where are you seeing people drop off, really kind of, you know, developing like those more like data driven strategies around why am I A-B testing this? Like if you start working with someone who does CRO and they're like, well, the first thing I want to do is A-B test the button colors, mm. fire them. Mm. <laughs> it's a huge waste of time. Button colors, unless you're like I don't know, Apple, it's not really worth it. Um, so there's a lot more larger elements that you can test that are going to not only improve your conversion rate, but your average order value. And then you also have to think, which we'll kind of touch on throughout this, you have different types of conversion rates. You have the obvious, which for most of us here is going to be, how do I get more people to purchase, right? Self-explanatory. Then you have your other side of things. So let's look at like a blog CRO perspective where maybe the goal there is kind of, it's a little tough to get someone from a very top of funnel perspective to actually convert. So how are we getting emails? That's just one element, right? So, or leads, depending on if you're a B2B product company, then you got to look at the other side of it. What are all those same metrics on your desktop, on mobile, on tablet, on certain browsers? 
Then you got to break it down by source. What's your individual conversion rate from there? Someone who's coming in from Google ads is going to be much more likely to convert than from, let's say, meta ads. So now you've got to figure out how do we kind of manipulate what they're seeing. You can layer in certain things where if they're coming from one source, they see something. If they're coming from another source, they see something else. There's a lot of stuff like that that can be A-B tested that just improves the overall conversion rate. But at the end of the day, a lot of people will think about I just want to improve overall conversions, but conversions, A, could be anything, but B, you have to look at the micro conversions along the way. Most of us here, I imagine your top page is going to be your homepage, right? Typically, unless you've got a big, robust uh, SEO strategy in place, in which case it might be some of your blogs. But if those are the first places that they come, it's not a PDP or a collection page. So you've got to find ways to get them to go over to those pages first then to your cart, then to check out and then convert. So it's those micro conversions along the way that we want to make sure we focus on. It is very much basic math. So to kind of show like, hey, here's where you see the benefit of improving stuff on your website, assuming you're spending about $15,000 a month in marketing costs, right? So you're not blowing the bank on anything too crazy. Average order value is relatively standard. You're at $75. Let's say you're getting about 50,000 visitors a month and you have your very average 2% conversion rate with about 1,000 orders, right? So your revenue is 75K. And so if you're putting in any kind of consistent testing and doing anything you can to improve your conversion rate, someone is like, oh, we're going to, you know, three extra conversion rate overnight it is a total lie. It takes time to figure out the different directions that things are going in, where you're getting the drop off. But from even just a 0.3% improvement in your conversion rate, you could see an immediate eleven thousand dollars and what eleven two fifty a month. So it's an additional one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year just from incremental changes. So once you get to that certain size, is when this becomes very justifiable to start A B testing things because over the course of a full year, it's extremely justifiable as long as it's being implemented correctly. So I kind of want to go through our process, and then we're just going to get right into this teardown. And the reason I wanted to touch on the process is to kind of explain why we're doing the teardown the way we're doing it. So the very first thing we're going to do, obvious, right? We got to do our research. We have to look into like, who is your actual audience? What are your current pathways of how you're driving people to the website? You know, it's kind of a deep dive into Google Analytics, but then also getting some insight directly from the owner of how are you driving people to the website? Um, what do you think are the strengths and weaknesses? What do you like about other people's sites versus yours? There's a lot of stuff that sometimes people will suggest implementing that we don't suggest doing because sometimes it's kitschy. My favorite website that I think converts well, but I love to make fun of is Fanatics. If you go to Fanatics, if you're a big sports person, you're like, oh, I got to get a jersey. They litter you with uh, different um, like exclusivity stuff and scarcity stuff. And hey, we have this sale and we have that sale. And then we've got all these different things going on. And it drives me crazy. So sometimes like you've got to also decide like what are you going to test that's relevant to your brand and how you want your brand to be perceived. So there's different directions of the research and figuring out what goes on there. And then that's when we start getting into the audit. So Obviously, a lot of stuff comes down from the research tool side. Google Analytics is going to tell you a lot, especially if it's set up correctly. VWO, we're VWO partners, so obviously, and they're sponsoring this, so we're obviously going to cater to them today. But using their insights, looking at heat maps, scroll tracking, all that kind of stuff, especially as time goes on, is very beneficial. Um, but to backtrack, the, the CRO audit that we do... If this data is available, fantastic. But the CRO audit that we do is very much from a UX UI perspective of what can we clearly see is in a in a rough spot and can be immediately fixed or where are there elements where it's like, this should probably be tested. And so that's when we start mapping out all those different test strategies. So this kind of becomes that hypothesis stage. So typically we'll find a pretty good amount of stuff that's just relevant that it's like, hey, this should be fixed. And then there's other things where it's like, this looks like it could be better, but we don't know for sure. So this is a great area for us to start testing. And we do that based on where we see most of your drop off, right? So let's use the homepage as an example. Can sometimes be where you want to start things off only because what's happening is you're getting so much traffic to your homepage and you need to get them to a collection or a PDP before they're going to convert. So we've got to look at how do we restructure things on the homepage to get more people to that page. Then we look at getting them to cart to check out and then actual conversion. 
So obviously once those tests are mapped out and we've all decided like, okay, these definitely seem to make the most sense, then it comes prioritizing those tests because if you're going to run multiple tests at any given time, the thing you have to factor in is, are any of these tests going to overlap and mess up my data? So you can't have like six different PDP tests running at any given time because they're going to skew your data on what it is. So everything has to be relatively split apart. So that comes down to, okay, now prioritizing the tests, and then we have to design them and actually develop them directly into something like a VWL. So we can look at how is this going to look even once this is done? Because if it wins, it's probably going to get developed on the website. And if it looks horrible, I don't care if it wins. So that gets implemented into there. Then there's the obvious. You push live, you monitor it. Usually we suggest running tests for about two weeks. This gives you plenty of data to decipher what's working. If you're using something like a VWO, it will start to tell you right away who's going to win. But you can then evaluate, like, is this a clear winner or is this something where I want this to run the full amount of time? And then sometimes you have to go back and decide if you've got to retest it. Maybe something just didn't give you enough data. Maybe you need it to run longer. There's a ton of different ways. So it's pushing it live, monitoring it, looking at the heat maps, the scroll tracking, and seeing how are people interacting with the test that's going on. Then there's the post-test analysis. So now it's done. Let's look at the data. Let's look at the heat maps that were completed from that area. Which of these variations is being claimed as the winner? What does the winner actually mean? Your winner doesn't always mean, oh, I got more sales. Like if you're making changes on your home page and the goal is to get someone to the PDP or a collection page, your actual conversion there is just traffic to a certain page. So those are the things that we have to look at of, are we getting that traffic? Is it getting what it needed to? Does it look the way we want it to? And then that's when we analyze what's our actually winning conversion uh, test. And then of course it's development. I always suggest developing it directly into the website. So taking the code directly out of VWL and putting it directly on the, on the website so you don't have any kind of like masking situation going on. And then this way, it's completely live on your new site, and then you move on to your next test. That's more or less what this entire approach is, right? And so I'm going to launch this last poll before we start getting into um, our teardown here. But I mean, I'm curious out of what everyone's conversion rate is on their website right now. I'd kind of give us a little baseline of where we can guide some of this stuff. But that that overall process, what we're going to be doing today is essentially kind of like steps one and two. We're looking at a very high level. We're going to do kind of a UX UI review of certain websites that were submitted. And then we're also going to provide some insight into these are some areas that seem very clear that should be tested. And so then from there, what would normally be our next step is, okay, let's design these new changes. After that's all approved, put it into something like a VWO, start testing it and moving on. So today we're going to keep it relatively high level only because we don't have access to everyone's stuff Mm -hmm. because some of that was going to be a nightmare if we asked you all to do that. And I didn't want to get five, what is it, 300 different Google Analytics accounts. Um, So what we're going to do, uh, we're not going to be able to know like, hey, here's where your big drop off is. So here's where we think you should test. We're just going to be a little bit more focused on high level. And then obviously we'll set some stuff up towards the end where we can help dig a lot deeper for you all as well. There is a poll live if you're just listening and not watching. Um, But right now it looks like everyone is under a 3%. 50% of you are between a 1% and a 2%. So those are low. Uh, Let me Hold on. Let me rephrase before anyone panics. Um, We work with some websites where they're 5 6%. But the product line really calls for that. And so someone just selected in that area too. Like that could very well be justifiable, especially like a B2B product line tends to have a higher conversion rate depending on some of the products. 2% tends to be like where everyone wants to see it. And like, that's what their goal is to get there. And that's kind of standard if you just have a a uh, well-designed website. But if you're putting in the work for your CRO strategies, you usually want to see that close, like definitely in like the three, but closer to like a four to five all in. But like I said, there's a ton of other things you got to factor in. Every product line is very different. Every experience on a website is very different. Uh, how you're marketing products is very different. If you're doing a ton of social media ads, it's very top of funnel. So that's going to drive your conversion rate down. If you're doing a ton of like SEO and Google ads, it might go the other direction. If you're just relying on like word of mouth, then it's a real high conversion rate. So it could be all over the place. Um, But it looks like half of our audience today 
is between that one to two percent. So we're going to show you some areas that you can really look at here. Um, 16% in that two to three range, a little bit better. We yeah. do have some in that three plus and even someone in the five plus. Um, and then some uh, definitely on the lower end of sub 0.5. So that means you've got a ton of areas to improve there. If you're sub 1%, you've got a lot of, of opportunity there. Um, what do you think, buddy? Ready to do this? Sure. All right. So this is your last chance um, to submit uh, your website in the chat if you would like it to be featured. As I said before, there are people that have already submitted them via the survey thing that we had, so we're already locked and loaded with those. And then I'm going to get into anyone who has put their website into the chat today. Um, and then we'll we'll also chat at the end about how we can help if uh, we didn't have time to get to everyone. Um, so we're kicking it off. So the light shop. <laughs> this was uh, submitted to us uh, via the survey. So we're all locked and loaded with this. And now this is where Jason shines. So Jason, I'm going to let you kind of just take the reins here and tell me where you'd like me to go, if anywhere. Well, so. first, it, um, when I'm going to break down these sites, the first initial thing I'm probably going to do is start with quick fixes, easy optimizations that you should really do that don't need to be tested. Something like it's great you're collecting emails all the way at the top. However, that should be where your main promotion is, especially on mobile. If you see up top, they have an opt-in and a sign up and get um, 10% off. Something like that I would put always under B spots or A spots. Um, and then in that location – that's usually called your site wide where you are pushing the product you want to sell the most, obviously right now. So like I see on the site, 20% off this 20% off that put all you put the 20% off products in the top bar. That's what's going to push the most traffic to those specific categories. If you look on this site as well, and you kind of look around, there's different things, especially on mobile, the value propositions need to get optimized for space. There's spacing issues there. I know you said CTA colors, and I agree with that. <laughs> However, you need to make sure all your B spots actually have a consistent CTA that um, keeps the customer knowing what's clickable, what's not. So if you scroll down even further, there's secondary B spots that don't have any CTA. So that's yeah. a quick optimization that you need to handle. Um, as you scroll down to your uh, one of the categories have no product in them under wall sconces. It's, got it broken. it's yeah. also 2022 favorites. So it might be old. And then <laughs> judge me badges at the bottom are kind of broken as well. Yeah. These are all off. Um, when someone lands on the homepage, they got what, what'd you say? Two, like two seconds to two really draw them in. Although I can tell all the imagery here seems vendor given. I think a good design effort to make these a lot more compelling and focus on, especially like that picture right there you're seeing, that's desktop. The lighting fixtures aren't even in the picture right now. On mobile, you can see them, but on desktop, you cannot. Yeah, and this guy's cropped. Exactly. So there's, you need to make sure you optimize both all spots, for desktop, mobile, and make sure you're focusing on, even though the room is really nice, you need to focus, make sure the fixture is the focal point of the um, the image. What I would say to this company would be take a look at Wayfair. Wayfair uses the same sort of photography. Um, however, their UX UI conversions are through the roof. Uh, as far as tests, you have a brand section. We see throughout a bunch of our tests and websites Having brand category tiles with logos will tend to be some of the highest click things on your website. Um, you need I would A-B test that immediately on the homepage. That'd be probably one of my first ones. Because then if you click into, say, one of these, we – where was it? Um – because then now this is the page 
that would put people in the super shopping mind. So I've I've worked with this before in the quick shop and add to cart. Um, I would test those CTAs there. Remove one. I'd remove add to cart, or I'd remove quick view. Um, the majority of the time, especially at I think light fixtures, you got to think of your audience too. There's not going to be a lot of quick add to carts. They're going to want to see dimensions. It. Yeah, lights uh, stuff in a space. Um, so stuff- yeah, anything that's expensive, exactly. I feel like they're gonna want to do a little bit of research. So collection pages, getting them, especially if the brand has is has like brand recognition. You get them to this page. I wouldn't put at the cart really quick shop just because it pulls up all the dimensions could work here, but that's something that's extremely testable to me. Um, but if you're going to do that, I feel like then you've got to have an option to like go to the full page, Like you could do a quick shot, but then like, what if I want to get to the full PDP? And I feel like that's something that would be missing on here as well. Yeah. And then that's just going to add clicks to the user journey, which is not what we want. Um, so you just broke it. No, I said this image is broken. Oh, um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> something here too the 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 save 45 percent off and everything is perfect that's kind of what we like to tell you tagging products like makes the conversion rate go higher but something i would go here especially with lights if you have any low price point items that go with multiple products let's start doing some upsells on the pdp or in your cart there's no upsells there's- anywhere um you may also like, but but even we tend to say add your upsells to the cart or the Shopify checkout. There is plugins you can do it to where you have it under the right hand side. Um that's something I would absolutely start as well, is upsells. That's the one test you'll see with a lot of CRO agencies. How whatever whoever offers zero services is the upsell test because that's the that's the end of the funnel. That's how you're going to get the cart value up significantly. You're just going to yeah. get it's the best one. What's uh, I'm thinking too here, like mini cart slide out the slide as opposed out. to taking them directly to a cart page. So you're kind of reducing another page load. Plus, it gives you that opportunity of you know, upselling within the cart. Yeah, slide out, slide out cart is recommended. There should be a mini cart. Click uh, at the cart. Have you done that? Yeah, no, it's taking me straight to cart. Okay, so then on collection page they have a mini cart, but not on a PDP, which is interesting. I would carry that mini cart across the whole website. Oh, yeah. Um. There's multiple ways to do this correctly. There's people do. The most common is when you add to cart, it's it either is a little card in the top right of the screen or it slides out and you slide it back in. It yeah. just makes it so people don't come off a shoppable page. Um, yeah. um, Phil had a question. Uh, is it generally better to upsell before the cart in the cart or on a sales page? And uh, basically like, Oh, he just sent it twice. Um, the uh, basically, you got to test it. Everything's got to be tested. It's one of those things where it's like it's going to be really difficult for us to be like, "Hey, this is you need to do this." There's stuff where we're going to be like, "You need to test this because we're pretty sure it's going to be a winner." But like in that scenario, it's going to be kind of dependent on the product line because you might have products that are, "Hey, it'd be great if I get them to also buy this," which might be better on a PDP. Then they get to the cart and it's like, okay, now my chances of upselling them on maybe something more expensive aren't as great. So maybe I'm going to try to pitch them on something else. Then when they get to checkout and they still haven't added anything else, how do I get them to just add like one little extra thing? Um, so it, it can kind of be dependent and something you would want to test. But at, if you can, you should have upsell opportunities throughout the entire process. It's also just a matter of how they get implemented where it's not 
obnoxious. You want it to be worded and presented as like, uh, hey, you're buying this. You might also want one of these while you're here. Not like, a, hey, you're buying this, buy this too. Like there's a lot of, um, you don't want to be over pushy with a lot of that stuff. So it is also kind of dependent on how you place it. Yeah, really, I th- really price dependent. Really. Yeah. As well as product line based, like say, I'm trying to think of an example. Say you're selling plates, like just because it's a home decor. Say you're selling plates. I would put an upsell of place mats in the cart that are like $10. Not the silverware set that's worth this much in the cart. Yeah. Could do um, as well would be to just a general restructure of the PDP in itself. Um, like purchasing options are always kind of interesting. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It's something you would want to test. But like this right here causes all of this extra white space. So you really could look at how do you restructure this where maybe your specs are in like an accordion or something so that it's not just like kind of floating around. But anything you can do to push stuff up the fold so they don't have to scroll so far. And then that'll also in turn bring up your you may also like or recently viewed. So from that perspective, you're you're kind of showcasing more product from there. Yeah, especially on desktop, you can do sticky um, sticky product images. Yeah. Let it scroll with the with everything. Yeah, there, this oh there we go. Mobile's um, all right. Um there is certain UX UI issues I can also see. I would no need to have home in your navigation. It's pretty much general yeah. knowledge now um that your logo is the home button. Yeah, this is a I would get rid of this. The other thing, too, to your point, like the brand side, if I'm not there, uh, I think I know some of these brands. It, it could be interesting to have this drop down with an image, more like imagery. So instead of like mega menu, yeah, doing like a mega menu. So instead of having just the term elk home here, you could have like their actual logo and then have this brands option linked to a collection page that showcases all of your brands with their logo. Because a lot of people, the whole purpose of a logo is to kind of build that brand awareness. And so when people see your colors or the font you're using, et cetera, it reminds them of your brand. And so if you're trying to piggyback off of their existing brand awareness, showcasing that brand uh, logo is going to be a lot more clear. And kind of to the point Jason made before too, you want to look at your data and see... uh, that was weird. Um, you want to look at your data and see like what your top brands are, which I'm sure you know them, but those would be the ones that you would lean towards on either the collection page or if you did like a mega menu and you kind of ran out of room because you've got a good amount of brands here, you could showcase like, hey, these are my top 10 brands and then just have like a view all brands button. And that way what you're doing is you're really reducing the amount of clicks that you're kind of forcing someone to get to if you're finding people are shopping through your brands more than anything else. So you can look at, you know, for everyone out any pay, any website, top collection pages, top product pages, where are people most likely going? How do you make it easier for them to get there, right? And so that's when you start looking at what can I do on my homepage to get people to those areas faster. I would All love right. to see just one quick thing, something that the site that I call it cheeky and fun. I would love to see their about us promo code if how many conversions they have this this was great um i actually really like this idea i think it's pretty smart uh they added at the bottom of their about us page if you actually basically read the whole thing you deserve a coupon um and so they've got a 10 percent off i assume on what that is down there yep i'd love yeah i, I agree i would like if you're on the call today uh tell us like does it work because I'm shocked that we came across it. I'm not being yeah. to know if anyone's come across that. Um, all right, let's uh, let's move on here. Next one. Log span. This is awesome. I want to put one of these in my backyard. I'm already um, looking at them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. A pretty good amount of stuff here. Yeah, something like this is. Um, this is a good example of. To me, 
when companies all like you hear companies go, Hey, I want a complete homepage redesign, this and that. And then they see a price. It's like, well, slow down. CRO is the perfect method to just test certain spots and eventually get a homepage redesign that works correctly. It just may take a little longer. Um, first things first, like a whole nav, um, refresh would be involved here, especially on desktop. The image, the text is really small. Mobile's not too bad, but the whole A spot section is the black, uh, the green. I'm looking at my eye goes directly to a green block, not a product, not anything, just kind of a green block. Like we yeah. said previously, you got two seconds. So that first initial spot needs to be one of the best pictures on the website. It needs to encompass everything about your site and what you're selling. So I know if I land on it and I see this summer house shed in the backyard, I know where I'm at, not a green block. And then I have to read. Yeah. Like when I first landed on this, I wasn't positive what you were selling. Like I, I know you're doing spring sale. We were reducing prices on selected cabins. And then I see this cabin here. So, you know, deductive reasoning, I figured out like, oh, they sell these like massive cabin things, which is awesome. But like make that a spot make barbecue that. huts. Yeah. Like that's, I can't tell what's going on there. Uh, log cabins like, okay, so what aspect of this are you selling? So I, I completely agree with Jason. I'm just like, I didn't know what was being offered here. And so your homepage being your, uh, first impression, great opportunity to like kind of clean this up and showcase that. And just all clickable areas, kind of like how I said in the last site where the one spots were missing CTAs, all clickable areas need to have the same clickable assets on it. So if you go down, there's this, how will you use yours? Home, gym, diner, family room. These is this is a new CTA introduced that is different than everything else. So it makes the brand seem disjointed. Um, things such it's as nice as thing. featured on two, like the BBC, Daily Mail, some big names, bring that up top, put them in under an image spot, test that under. That's good social proof. Need yeah, to- these are also huge. Yes, they're massive. <laughs> I would, I'd shrink these down and do it like a banner across the board. Exactly. And that's some, as well as like your spring sale and the 200 deposit, put that up in a top site wide banner and then people can see it, whatever, whatever page they're on. And then that yeah. frees up your whole a spot to do a nice image banner that then drags people to, if you want to do one focused on a BB, BBQ hut or a log cabin, or you have a rotator. So, a main hero section test would be my immediate one for this company for sure. Yeah. Um, kind of going along with the other one, the cart. I do slider cart. We need to uh, kind of do some UX UI updates there. Um, for some reason, I don't know if I, I have my phone right here with everything. Their mobile menu does not work on my phone. Uh, I would look into that. It was a clear fix. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't test that. That would be one of those. <laughs> look just fix that. it. Sticky menu as well on desktop works fine. Mobile, not a thing. I would do sticky menu. Yeah. So like I just added something to the menu or to the cart. And when I do add to basket, Nothing like there's no notification that I in fact just added something to my basket. Yeah. Like they need to be alerted that it got added. The other thing I would say, like we've done a lot of work with brands that have like these crazy expensive products, at least in comparison to others, the chances of someone just coming in here and buying this without speaking to someone severely goes down as soon as you get a product that's over like $500. So I know you've got the request a quote here option, um, which kicks me to another page. Something that might be worth testing is actually having a form at the bottom of your CTA. Or so have that be an it. anchor. Request a quote. Here. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I would have it be an anchor. So it's not opening up another page. The, the less amount of page loads you can do, the better. There's obviously stuff here from like a structural standpoint, like these could go side by side and things like that. But I would definitely cater to this because I'm imagining people are going to want to talk. And then I would also assume sometimes people just don't want to deal with it. But having some kind of chat option directly on here when people are getting ready to make a purchase, like they're going to have questions no matter how much information you put on a PDP, people want it fed to them, especially if the product is expensive. So I think adding in a chat would be very beneficial. Um, you know, there's some big fancy chats out there, but you could also just do one where you've got a customer service rep that's available. Yeah, and so that's. It seems like it's a PDP template, but something I don't know if it's. This might just be my personal thing. So like some of the products, it has customization features. And then it does have that request of code again saying, wishing to customize this product. So you're double asking. To me, yeah. there's different ways you can do different PDP templates that you can assign it to your products where you that does not need to be on everything. So if the product's already customizable, you can just put in a add to basket or talk to sales rep. You don't need the request of quote. Yeah. And as I was sitting here, so I added this to my basket. And then when I go to open it, it's saying that there's nothing in there. So this is one of those clear scenarios of you should absolutely invest in, I'm going to say VWO because they're a sponsor, um, but heat mapping, scroll tracking, watching people use your website and seeing what's happening. Like you'll, th you can run reports on what's called like rage clicks. So if something's not working and someone's in here, just clicking away at something, trying to get it to work, you can actually find that stuff. So you can find things that are broken. Like in this scenario where it looks like I should have something in my cart, but I don't. So, and there's nothing on here saying that like it's out of stock or anything. Uh, I just got it on mobile too. And it reloaded the page for me. Oh, and now I think I broke it. <laughs> yeah all right so another some errors on this one a lot of stuff that i think could be found another thing i would do too is it would be cool if you know when you select this if i pick red that this changes to red so i can see what the red actually looks like do you have anything else on this one uh one thing for every everybody and if you don't have it i would suggest putting it in it's a quick fix and it can like quickly raise like even engagement, like five, ten percent real quick, get predictive search on your websites. Um, a lot of people, a lot more people than we think whenever I see this, especially in GA use the search function just to get to a PDP. They know that you have. So the predictive search, if I can just type in T and my favorite T pops up right immediately, it just it helps with getting that person to the page that they can purchase fast. Yeah. All right. On this site, some cleaning up to do. Um, definitely some areas to fix on this guy. Uh, it's a good example yeah. of it. If you don't want to shell out this huge website redesign project, you start testing features. And you yeah, redesigning an entire ship. website. Yeah, it's so. I mean, it's. We do them and they're, you know, depending on if you're doing like a custom builder, if you're just leveraging a theme is very different. But the, in my opinion, the correct way to redesign a website is to do CRO because otherwise you're redesigning it with just no data around it. You're just deciding to redo stuff and testing different layouts and things like that are going to be a way for you to slowly reskin your entire website as opposed to just guessing, in which case you're going to have to test it again anyway. And yes, I believe there'll be recording of this available, correct? Yep. Yeah, yeah we'll have a recording set yes. this. All right. This next one. So this one, this one threw us for a loop. Uh, it did. I, th I think it's because we're here in the States and uh, not, I forgot how to do it. Yeah, so I, I believe you're not available for purchase di or direct purchase in the states. It's all retail. But then it was Canada. Yeah, so English. then it was Canada. So we're kind of when we looked at the English one, 
we can only figure out so much because you don't really have a conversion on there. Um, so we looked mostly at the Canada side, but Jason, I'll let you kind of guide me on which location you want me on. Um, so this is a site that I think could, there's a clear, so the only thing you could do on this website is build a box. And there's a clear copy, different copy test you can do here. Because CRO does embody copy tests and how the brand sounds. Because when I first landed on it, obviously obviously it says build your box. But from an e perspective, I feel like I can buy these one off. But I still can't. Um, a lot of these subscription boxes as well, I would test the UX steps to this i would see if allowing a person to create their box before having to put in their email address and postal code would uh boost conversions in general yeah. i've done that in the past like i've i've used to i've had factor and i, I know what's the other big meal prep thing and I, I got to pick everything before and then i went and got it um I would, that's, this is a good UX test. I, I would, um, <clears throat> that'd be my first one. Yeah. Something here too, to think about this decision. Uh, I, I'm guessing, you know, building a box as opposed to buying them separately or anything like that. It's, there's probably something with shipping and thing and how hard I'm guessing these have to be cold packed, which I know those are a pain. So like that could be a whole thing, but this decision of gating, you're basically gating the opportunity for someone to shop with you. I understand that you need to see if they deliver to their area. You really could change this to be almost like a traditional PDP with a zip code thing that just they put in a zip code and it will say like, yes, we ship to your area or no, we don't. But if you're, when I came to this, even knowing we were going to review the site, I was like, I don't want to fill this out. And so the thing that I thought about was, if a user comes here and they goes, I, I just want to know what I can build in my box and what it's going to cost me. And then I'll figure out if I can't ship to you, you know, it could be an opportunity for you to request shipping and like, we'll alert you when we can ship to your area or something like that. But what happens here is if someone sees this and they decide like, Oh, I, I don't want to do this. They leave right away. That's going to increase your bounce rate, which is going to hurt you from an SEO perspective over time because Google's going to see like, oh, people are getting to these pages and then they're just leaving. Mm -hmm. So it's not providing the value that they want. So they're going to hurt your overall ranking. So that's just from an SEO perspective. But even from a CRO perspective, looking at this, it's like you're limiting the user from finding out what they want to find out about your product just because you want to try and get their email first. But I, I really think you need to show them the product and then be like, hey, see if we ship to your area and then say, do you want to get alerted when we can ship to your area if you can't? It looks like Priscilla's in here. I would love to know if if building a, if you've ever offered pre-built boxes for sale. Because that'd be something else I'd test. Yeah, so, you don't have even, to make a decision. <laughs> even a sample box of the fruit flavors or this flavor and see how that goes with an option on that PDP to sign up for subscriptions. Um, I love giving a customer the option of free choice. However, you really need to guide them like the border closing in a lot. Yes, we A-B tested one time versus subscription. The retention rate just dropped. Did the, the one, a one-time purchase versus subscription. And the retent. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Your retention rate's gonna drop because you're catering to the one-time purchase. Mm -hmm. But the thing you've got to look at is what can you put into place after that one-time purchase to then get them to subscribe later. Like a lot of people are going to be hesitant to subscribe without trying something first. So the other option would be you could lead with the subscription side, but then you've got to make it like very clear on how they can cancel and things like that. And sometimes people get weary about that. So I would look at 
maybe after someone makes that one-time purchase, what's your drip campaign look like? Like, how do you have it set up from there? You could actually, what are you using? You're using Klaviyo. Perfect. So you could use Klaviyo, have a, uh, a segment of people that have one-time purchased and haven't subscribed and run ads just to that audience with some kind of incentive to get them to subscribe. Um, so there's other ways that you can kind of look at post purchase of that one time purchase before they get into subscription. But again, it's a test thing. I mean, the imagery and everything, very compelling. You know what you're looking at. Yeah. Um, the GIF it's on the home page, awesome, showing people how easy it is. Um, this would be one more of a testing different customer journey elements. Oh, that was yeah. something else. Do they have any promotion? Is that a blog you're on? Yeah. They have any promotional banners? No. So that's what I was. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. That's a recipe so like, one too. Yeah. Yeah. So I I like this. Like it's it's better than most. Um, but from a blog perspective, like I would make usually what we suggest, especially anyone here, you're doing any kind of SEO stuff, which you should be. Um, you're not going to run ads on your own website. You, no one here's a media outlet. However, you can run ads, quote unquote, of your own stuff. So creating custom imagery that showcases a collection page or a product page or whatever offer you have going, that way it kind of like pops as an ad. Like in this case, like I do see what you did where this is like a CTA, but I'd rather this be like an image of the cinnamon cookie and then have a CTA within it. You've also got all this other area where you could put in from a desktop perspective, put in a sidebar have different options there for people to be able to order something or the other thing doing like a um, like some kind of gated content. Cause a lot of times when you have them coming in from a blog, they may not be ready to purchase yet, but this is where you can really utilize something like that. And then of course you have like a pop-up and things like that, like your basic things you could do, but a lot of people skip over doing anything on a blog. And I think it's a huge mistake because if you're focusing on SEO a lot of your traffic's going to come from there. And if you can get them to convert on the blog, you absolutely should. There's even some plugins and stuff. Um, I think we were on Shopify, I believe, right? Where are we at? Ooh, thought you, oh, no, you're on WordPress. Um, there are plugins and apps and things where you can actually give people the ability to add to cart directly from your blog. I've seen those work really well too. So if you've got, if you're catering to SEO, I highly suggest looking at the CRO capabilities of your blog so that you can improve the actual conversion rate of what's coming in through there. Can you uh, can yeah. you go to their – try and build a box right now. It's not allowing me to put in – oh, it's Canada. Never mind. It doesn't allow you to put in numbers right in the beginning. I should know. This is the other thing too. I can't get back. So now that I'm on your blog, I can't get back to – Yeah, I can't get back to purchasing. So I would definitely have something. It, it, I'm usually not a fan of having a completely different menu for your blog. Um, but if you feel you need it, then I would still have something up here that gets me back to your website. Because this is a lot of, this is obviously I know catered from an SEO perspective. But now I'm like, okay, how do I start shopping? And like, I don't have a menu up here. I'd love to see like what you have up top. Um, yeah, so it's a separate WordPress site, yeah. which it's fine. You could still design it to look similar. It doesn't need to be perfect, but like I would want to be able to get at least to here so that I could start shopping around without having to figure out like how to do that. Can you go back, uh, go to the blog, go to the first go one the and read it. This one? Yeah, sure. Let me see. Can you click order? When you get down to the CTA, see where that takes you. So, it oh. yeah, nice just heads up. Me. So it looks like some of the CTAs, like I was also on the Mocha one, I believe, the blog for it. And I pressed the order and it took me to like a blank sort of page. Yeah, so, so you got some broken links on it. Yeah, here. just heads up. Some and of the... There's a lot of stuff you could do from an SEO perspective on these too, um, but that's a that's a different event. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's go to our next one here. So now 
we've got plant therapy. Again, thank you for submitting. Um, I'm familiar with this brand, actually. Uh, we've uh, Years ago, I did work with your competitor. <laughs> and so I know exactly what you've got to do here. Um, there's a lot of stuff here, but Jason, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you kick us off. Oh, well, first I it, it professionally designed. This is, I, I love the look of it, the feel of it. Um, I understand that every brand has a purpose and impact on the life. However, the, just because we're e-com brand, I need to, that top spot is for shopping. I would test um, – now, you could put that perp, that under it, under the, an A spot, but that's where I would test versus a product-specific A spot. Now, if that's your market – if that is, like, in your marketing schedule and you go off and on, good. Um, but that top spot is mainly where we start testing different – you test a bundle versus a single product. You test – a single product versus a collection. Um, one thing too, I would also look at is the collection icons under, I know your aesthetic right now is like underlined linking, but I would test how that looks. It's not a CTA color test, but it's how it should look like all the CTAs. Um, because those are mainly one of the most click things that we see. It's pretty nuts. Yeah. That I didn't even notice that these were clickable. Yeah. I thought it was just like call outs. Um on was it no. Yeah, the navigation's great. The one thing I wanna can you please go to a this is what I was looking at, especially on mobile. Can you go to a um a collection page? Just go to like a shop all essential oils or something. Yeah. Lotions and creams. So yeah. So desktop is not really that big. But that top collection banner, I believe this is in Shopify. And a lot of shop like where it says the title of the collection. I understand it looks nice, especially on mobile. i I either get rid of it or I go really small with it. Just to bring your product up. And then yeah. I would also test your tagging system you have. It's just underlined. It looks like hyperlinking in like a blog. I would make them little pills throughout. And especially on mobile, you can have them kind of rotate. So it's more app-like. But my biggest thing was, yeah, you're going to have to go to essential oils for this because I don't think lotions and creams have it. Was the how variations? This is a big test I would do. How variations are selected in here? So you have a drop down of sizes. I would make that into like you ever seen who does a good one, like little circles of each variation. So it's just one click, not two radio buttons. Yeah, you can call it that. Mm -hmm. But that's my main. That cuts down on one click. And these are all three. And that one click. Now, when we say, oh, well, it's only one click. It could change the conversion rate significantly. Yeah. There's a bunch of like. Th I agree. This site's in a, in a really good spot from a general UX UI perspective. Now it's a matter of, okay, how do we test these? Because it's the same thing here, right? Like you've got choose your size. This is one click. This is two clicks. I would love to have these as radio buttons so that I have one click. And I know it seems ridiculous. Like, okay, you're getting rid of one click. Who cares? But you'd be shocked at how getting rid of one click can change a lot. This could very well be a, a very minimal change and like it doesn't really do major effect. But in any scenario, the best thing you want to do is set things up so that you can reduce as many clicks as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like with this specifically, a ton of stuff that could be tested. You know, I, I would definitely look at having some upsell opportunities within uh, cart, within sure. the cart. 
you've got noted that you're doing a free gift with a sixty dollar purchase, you could definitely explore one of the um that's in progress that is, bars. That is in the next so that's I would do a progress bar, but it's also in the like go to the next step. Like they have a lot of it on this step here. Yeah. But to me, I, I, the free gift is in the cart. Yeah, I'd have some of this stuff within that cart. This product line calls for it to be like, especially if you're offering free gift. Yeah. Another thing with this I was seeing, on their collection pages, they have great, um, it's like product card, product card, product card. And then another, you see how that the unleash radiant. So that I would take those and test them on your blogs. You have no promotional banners on your blogs. Those would be fantastic on a blog. I mean, a lot of the time we see some of our clients okay. where blogs are in the top 5% of pages that like the top five pages people land on. Yeah. I don't know if you're really... Yeah, I don't think you've got a strong SEO thing going on right now. I, a lot of these seem more like announcements. Um, this one sounds a little bit more SEO friendly. Yeah, but the, from an SEO perspective, I mean, there's a ton of stuff that you could do here because I'm, I'm, I can tell there's a few things that would be missing. But like to Jason's point, like these, these are all kids safe. Awesome. Give me something that clearly shows I can purchase it right here. So there's a ton of stuff from a blog that's always very interesting that kind of gets overlooked. Even if it's an announcement, it's an announcement about your radiant skin. Give me skin stuff. Yeah. Um, All right. Let's uh, let's do. So we're gonna do one more, um, and then we're gonna wrap some stuff up with. I'll give everyone some insight on how you can submit. Uh, Oh no, I had it loaded up. Where did it go? All right, I got it. Um, we're going to do this last one, Murphy Door, um, only because I think this product line is amazing. Uh, and then I'm going to get it. And then I'm going to give uh, everybody some insight on how you guys can submit so that we'll, we'll do it for everyone as much as we can here, um, as well as a ton of other stuff that we've got going on today. Um, plus, we'll do the giveaway. And by the prime stuff, I got you. We're just gonna we're gonna get through these guys real quick. Do la one last one. Um, Murphy Door, very cool product line. A ton of opportunity of stuff to test. Uh, Jason, I'll let Depot. you. I'll let you kick us off now at Home Depot. Congratulations. Yep, I saw <laughs> that. Their 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 ad campaigns hit me hard right now. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's a it's like we said might be because we're guys, but I love this stuff. This is really cool to me. Um, but the spring sale, 15% off. I, once again, a spot test right off the bat. I would, um, because so the homepage is built like this. Promo, the original hidden door. So a, a banner about a collection, some of the product, and then like it goes then the storage collection. You, uh, another, it looks like a wine cellar or bookcase collection like that. I would test an A spot with either best sell. You can and do a rotator, do best sellers, your promotion, and then new product. And under that, that's where I would have category tiles of all of your different categories. And then you can go down into B spots and look at um, best selling product rotators. Mm -hmm. So, a good test for this would be um, slowly testing different structural elements of this homepage because it's a, it's a, it's a pretty big price point, but especially in my age group, everyone's doing home renovations right now. So like, <laughs> yeah, the home, this is also like, I find this tough to read because you've yeah, got, it's white on white. So like, there's definitely, areas here because if, if you've got um uh like we see we saw you were using vwo so you've probably got insights i would definitely look at your heat map and see like i'm going to assume most people aren't really getting much further than like here 
So that means that a be lot true. of these larger collections and your top sellers have got to come up. And so I would test all elements of that. Plus, like to Jason's point, like testing the A spots, you've kind of got like a weird, almost like two A spot things going on. And this sale, if this is accurate and it's going on for a while, I'd have this be sticky and stay up here across yes. every page so that people know you've got a sale going on. But if you were to do that, so obviously that would come up here in your menu, I would merge something like these, have like a traditional kind of more rotating banner. And then you could have something big that showcases the spring sale and then go into like your hidden door collection pages, your Murphy uh, bed collection pages, et cetera. And then to his point, like you can have some of your call outs and then getting into bestsellers, stuff and, like that. Yeah. And like the spring sale turns into just for just heads up on mobile. It's kind of like just this really small thin banner. Um, so then the one below it becomes kind of an A spot. Uh, that design, I would think it, it would need to be, it's probably just a preset in whatever platform you're using. Like put this banner, put this text over this image with this sort of background, the design and the text within the image would be a big test for this section. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a quick thing too, on desktop, your shop now navigation is extremely deep. Uh, we, t we tend to say you need to be a little more narrow. Um, however, the good news on mobile, it's, it's pretty, it seems to be, it seems to work. So it's like shop now and then two clicks and you're onto something, which is pretty nice. Yeah. yeah this would get, that's, this is a little much. Yeah. Um, there's different ways to test for that. You can have like, I don't know. It might still do it. I know Party City does it in a way that it's a slide out and then it looks like their mobile thing and it guides them through each category. So it would be like a mobile, but on desktop. And it white when someone clicks shop now, they won't be like greeted with 30 odd categories <laughs> and be like, overwhelmed. Um, but that's also something that we look at Obviously, the majority of people's traffic's mobile, but we kind of look at those analytics and see what we should be focusing on. So that might be yeah. a less priority test. Um, I do have a note here. Collection pages too. Yeah, yeah. I do have a note here. I think this. Let me make sure it's this. Like Andrew started off this whole thing. I don't know if you guys have ever tested one step checkout. Um, they are using the multi step checkout. I would just take a look and see if you've – it's like a really – like a, a toggle on and off in Shopify. Test it for a month. See if uh, you see more checkout um, so many checkout drop-off. But that would be one as well. Ah. What it's because I'm trying to fly – it's because I'm trying to fly through this. That is, I know. So many choices. I can't get to it. Where's, what am I missing? Here, go to uh, <laughs> go to like the pool queue door. Go back to the home page, and then go All to right. the third one over. Yeah, go to that one. Pool queue. Wood type. Finish. Oh, wow. Sure, that works. That works. Let's do swing direction. This guy. Sure. Okay. Yep. Yep. Nope. 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 Or sorry, I kind of. Or you go to like a, a Murphy bed. Ooh, that was kind of a, a slow load. So I'd want to take a look at that. Um, this is a really good uh, example though of like, you'd want to test upsell stuff. Uh, I'd want to get more familiar with your product line and see what you have to upsell. But when you start getting into expensive things, trying to squeeze more dollars out of people can sometimes annoy them. So those are where you kind of want to tread a little bit lightly on what you want to do there. But I know you've got add-ons, so it would be interesting to like maybe explore some upsell opportunities within that checkout or within the cart, I should say. Um, but to Jason's point too, like probably look at the a different three, get away from the three step and try the one step. Uh, every test that we've done so far that I've seen everyone has either better results or same results by going to the one-step checkout. 
And in my opinion, going, I would just do it. Um, but if you feel more comfortable to test it, test it. And another thing I would do, and with something like this, I would think, or maybe not. <clears throat> um, something this big, uh, home, and when it's more home stuff, I'd put verbiage as a selling point somewhere close to probably the price point. Something about warranty, if you do offer it. Um, it's kind of a peace of mind. I know my wife loves to see warranties added. <laughs> um, the other thing I would do too, because like I see them, they come in here, but I'd I'd cater a lot more to lifestyle imagery, like anything, especially in a home goods area. Like they want to see what's this going to look like in my home. And so they need to picture it. So like a lot of people say like, that's why UGC works so well is because you're the user is kind of picturing themselves in whatever that situation is. And so like, I would want to see like, how is this going to look in my house? Um, now the other thing you could do, uh, which could be very interesting is there are some like AR apps out there where you could actually like someone could, take their phone and see what it looks like in their house. I think that would be great because I know like to Jason's point, what my wife's going to do is look at this and go, okay, what's that wood going to look like uh, against our color scheme that we have going on and like that type of stuff. And I know that that's going to be kind of difficult to map out. So there's some areas there too. It'd be really interesting to test or just additional functionality added to the site. AR is on the roadmap. Nice. He just uh, commented, nice, nice. Oh, he's here. Yeah. Hey, Ryan. So we were nice to you throughout most of this. <laughs> um, yeah, I would just love, to, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see more social proof. Like, uh, you know, if you've got reviews or if you've got even just testimonials that you're just adding it on your own. Um, the other thing would be like, depending on what you're doing with social, do you want to have like a live feed of how everything's looking in there, how people are doing it? Oh, absolutely. Um, Did they have 285,000 awesome. 285, followers? Get an Instagram rotator. Use some UGC. You could really benefit from that. Yeah. All right. I don't want to eat up more time. We already did. So, obviously, thank you all for joining us. I've got some a, a couple extra things. I'm going to let you all go. Obviously, we were not able to get through as many as we wanted to. We'd like to help and try to get through pretty much everyone. Um, I saw some people submit theirs in the chat today. We got through a couple of them, I've got, but unfortunately, we couldn't get through all of them. If you want us to do, we'll do like a screen share video, similar concept. Um, just shoot me an email. It's andrew at bluetusker.com. I will also drop it in the chat for you. Um, just shoot me an email. We'll get to them. We'll shoot your review on like, here's what we're seeing. Here's what we're thinking kind of thing. Again, this is all very high level stuff. Um, of course, if this is something that you want help with, we can obviously help you there. This is what we do day in and day out. We are, uh, VWO partners. We're also big commerce, Shopify, Gento, HubSpot. Um, we've been doing this for a lot of different brands. We've implemented it for we some brands. We simply just do the audits and implement the changes that we find. Other brands, they're in a good situation, like some of the ones we talked about today, to really implement a lot of different testing strategies. Um, one thing that I did want to call out, obviously thanking uh, Bio with Prime for joining us today. I said I'd be honest about it. And so I'm very aware that some people immediately go to, why do I want to give Amazon money or anything like that? Uh, teach their own. There are some facts that we've come across with Buyer's Prime. I've never seen it hurt anyone's conversion rate. Uh, sometimes it is very justifiable uh, from a cost perspective because Buyer's Prime, they they don't you don't have an FBA fee. There's just a commission, and then you have a different uh, fulfillment cost. So any I find that any products over thirty five dollars that are an FBA, it is very justifiable. As far as I'm aware, it is still only available in the states, although I think that's changing soon. But we actually did a test with uh, a client of ours, Snap Mounts, where we implemented Buy with Prime and did nothing else. Nothing else changed on their website. All we did was implement Buy with Prime. They saw a 60% conversion rate improvement. They saw an 8.5% increase in AOV. 
orders went up, revenue went up. Like it was like stuff that like, I'll be honest, like, Hey, there's a reason they're a case study. Not everyone it doesn't happen to everyone like this, but it's an awesome thing for you to test. There's no fee to starting with buyer prime. They are also offering for everyone who is eligible to, uh, sub- to load buy with prime onto their website. We will provide them with our full CRO audit. Uh, so I've got, Oh no, I think I closed the wrong one. I'm going to put into the chat. Uh, there is a landing page where you can submit for the, uh, CRO audit through buy with prime. So if you're interested in just testing buy with prime, we'll do a free CRO audit for you. Um, so I've got it in the chat for you there. And then last but not least as well, if you want to win our free, free, free full CRO audit. So it comes with a customer journey evaluation. It's a 300 plus point audit. We go through all of your main pages, your web, the homepage, your landing page, collection page, PDP, cart, checkout, et cetera. We go through the entire thing, itemize everything that we see are either areas that could clearly need improvement, areas you should consider for improvement, or things that we think are going to be a good test. We map out your test schedule and everything. Uh, we're going to be giving one completely f- uh, for free today. So just shoot me an email, same email address, Andrew Blue Tusker. Let me know that you guys are interested and that you want to join the drawing. We'll then throw it into one of those randomizer things and we're going to pick someone out and get a free CRO audit done for you. Um, and then out for that, we're all good. Thank you all for joining us. I uh, appreciate your time. And then uh, just a reminder, shoot me an email if you want us to either review your site and or if you want to join uh, in for the CRO audit training. Uh, training, geez. You can tell I've been exhausted after this. Uh, the CRO audit. Uh, uh... Giveaway. Giveaway. There you Thank go. You, Jason. Thank you all for joining us. And we'll see you all uh, next time. Have a good one. 